Descoperă viziunile viitorului. Poveștile bursei. Un proiect susținut de PricewaterhouseCoopers, Banca Comercială Română și Bursa de Valori București. In 2011, we have our first 200 cows. Now we have over 14,000 animals and we are still growing. We are one of the fastest growing companies uh, on the arrow market of the Bucharest uh, Stock Exchange. Cantitatea de lapte vândut am crescut o cu 15%. Am adoptat strategia de creștere atât prin achiziționarea de animale, cât și prin creșterea proprie. Progrese semnificative au fost realizate în agricultură în ultima vreme, iar uh, DNA Agrar, bineînțeles, le-a implementat. Una dintre acestea este folosirea dronelor agricole pentru realizarea uh, erbicidărilor selective în cultura de porumb. Din acest mod, noi am reușit să reducem semnificativ utilizarea pesticidelor în cultura de porumb. Our quote is always happy cows, healthy milk, satisfied customers. Hello, my name is Jan de Boer. I am the founder of uh, Denegra Group. In the past, I was a farmer in Holland, uh, 12 years. After this, I moved to Germany to Gang Grow. There was more space than in Holland. And in 2007, uh, was the Romanian to the EU. And that gave also possibilities and more asigurare to be sure what you invest that you also can make money. Then I traveled around in, uh, in Romania, uh, three weeks in two years where to want to be a farmer. Why? Uh, it's about the weather and the people uh, who are living here. Uh, you have your Sibio, you have your Alban, you have a nice surrounding for your employees. For this, I was choosing uh, this area. We uh, got listed on the Bucharest Stock Exchange to consolidate our businesses and our goal was to become the leader in milk production in Romania. This we succeeded uh, two, years, uh, two years ago. Since listing, we had a share price growth of almost 130%. Last year, we had a share price growth of 74%. We are one of the fastest growing companies uh, on the aero market of the Bucharest uh, Stock Exchange. Uh, currently, we are preparing to do, the, uh, in the coming years, the upgrade to the main market. We are implementing IFRS. Uh, we started to report on ESG standards. We implemented SOP, uh, the ERP system, to uh, be fully ready uh, to do the upgrade to the main market in the coming um, two or three uh, years. Currently, we have a market cap between 50 to 60 million euros, and we have a strategy, uh, our doubling strategy by the end of 2027. We will achieve this by constructing a new farm. We have, uh, at the moment, uh, three dairy farms in our uh, group. It's the Lacto Agar farm, the Uphold farm, and the Kutch farm. And, of course, our young stock uh, farm, which is the Prodelac farm, where we raise our own young cattle. In 2011, we have our first 200 uh, cows. Now we have uh, uh, over 14,000 animals and we are still growing. That's also our goal. Since January, we started to construct uh, the Strasia farm. That will be the largest farm in our group, where we will have approximately 3,800 dairy cows and 1,200 uh, young cattle. Um, and as soon as that will be finalized, we will be the largest milk producer in the European Union. So first it was our goal to become the leader in Romania, and now we are, uh, our next uh, goal is to become the leader in the European Union. Uh, currently we produce almost 200,000 liters per day. Uh, when we finish the Strasia project, we will produce over 300,000 liters uh, per day, which means on an annual basis that we produce over 100 million uh, liters. Uh, and that makes us, will make us the leader in the uh, EU in milk production. Activitatea zootehnică este una intensă, cu eforturi semnificative depuse în fiecare an. Fac parte din egripa DNA Agrar din 2011, din anul în care DNA Agrar a pus bazele zootehniei în România. Cantitatea de lapte vândut am crescut-o cu 15%. Am adoptat strategia de creștere atât prin achiziționarea de animale, cât și prin creșterea proprie. Pentru a crește eficiența forței de muncă în fermele noastre, am achiziționat doi roboți, în fermele Lacto Agrar și DNA Agrar Cut. It's really important for us to be sustainable for the future, not only business and financial wise, but also to deliver our contribution uh, to protect the environment, to play our role in climate change as well. We feel a responsibility for that, as we only not only want to be a leader 
in uh, the milk production, what we do, or in the uh, field of activity that we do, we also want to be a leader to, be, to become the most sustainable farm uh, in dairy production. And for that we invest in uh, compost plants, in biogas, uh, we also invested in a pipe where we now uh, transport manure. It's a pipe of eight kilometers long, so we can bring the, from the farm directly through a pipe eight kilometers of manure to the fields. With that, we heavily increased efficiency. First, with one tractor, we could fertilize 14 hectares per day. Now, through the, because of the uses of this pipe, we can fertilize 44 hectares per day. So that's a huge increase in efficiency as well. In 2008, uh, we start with 23 hectares. In this moment, we work over 10,000 hectares, but when you have land, you need also manure to fertilize the land. We want to be a um, sustainable company. Pentru DNA Agrar, încă de la început, asigurarea calității laptelui este foarte importantă. Iar pentru a avea un lapte de calitate, avem nevoie de furaje de calitate. Principalele culturi pe care le avem în cadrul companiei DNA Agrar sunt porumbul, grâul, triticalele și lucerna. Producția obținută de la acestea le folosim în fermele DNA Agrar și pentru plata arendei. Anul 2023 a fost un an cu provocări, atât din punct de vedere al mediului, cât și din punct de vedere al costurilor. Ceea ce ne-a făcut să trecem la agricultura minimum til și no til. Am făcut acest lucru din două motive, pentru a avea un cost mai bun pe tona de producție și pentru a fi mai sustenabil în fața schimbărilor climatice. Progrese semnificative au fost realizate în agricultură în ultima vreme, iar DNA Agrar, bineînțeles, le-a implementat. Una dintre acestea este folosirea dronelor agricole pentru realizarea ierbicidărilor selective în cultura de porumb. Din acest mod, noi am reușit să reducem semnificativ utilizarea pesticidelor în cultura de porumb. We perform circular agriculture, these days extremely important and one of our core values is sustainability. And circular agriculture means we provide our we produce our own food for our cows, so complete quality control on that part. With the manure the cows produce, we fertilize our soil. With this we are able to reduce heavily the uh, uh, consumption of uh, chemical fertilizers, which is way more polluting uh, for the environment. Next to that, currently we are starting to construct our compost factory. Again, we will reduce our emissions with this plant, as well as uh, uh, internally, where we can further reduce chemical fertilizers. We can bring our own compost project, our own uh, uh, fertilizer. We can bring it to our own fields. It means not only cost reduction, also improvement uh, for the environment. Our quote is always happy cows, healthy milk, satisfied customers and we invest a lot in health. We have a hospital for our animals, we have 24-7 vets which is really important to monitor. We invest a lot in bedding, in the quality of the stables and all these kind of things to, to, to provide the animals the best uh, they can offer. I think we offer an interesting uh, investment uh, case. Uh, if you look to our Q1 results for 2024, we improved our profit uh, margin to 20%. We had an EBITDA margin of uh, 43%. So we show a strong investment uh, case, especially that at the beginning of this year, we had a decrease of 25% uh, in sales, mainly due to the fact uh, of the decrease of, uh, of the milk price. And we succeeded to maintain uh, almost the same profitability and, uh, and uh, EBITDA as the previous uh, years, mainly due to the fact that we produced uh, approximately 20% more milk. Since March, we are in the MSCI indices, small cap and frontier uh, cap. We are nominated by the uh, IR magazine uh, in London for the best IR strategy uh, for retail investors uh, 2023. Uh, it's the first time that a Romanian company is nominated. We are only, uh, to mention, two years uh, listed on the Romanian stock exchange. And we belong to the six best companies in the EU uh, for investor relations, uh, for retail investors. And our competitors are, uh, to name one, is Banca Santander, huge Spanish multinational, uh, and Banca Caixa. Uh, so we are extremely proud of that with a small team that uh, we now uh, play Champions League on this level. To summarize, we want to grow in several ways. We will double our current business. The investments are done. We obtained uh, loans uh, from Exim Bank and ING. To do the Straja project becomes operational this year. The compost factory, the first compost plant, comes operational this year. For the midterm 
we will invest in the biogas plant with a reduction of 90% of our emissions. So I think we are really the right company if you want to, to have uh, investments in agricultural, the Enagra is the company to invest. Bun venit! Poveștile bursului, o nouă ediție. Astăzi vorbim despre DNA Agrar, care e liderul în producția de lapte în România și l-am invitat în studio pe Peter de Boer, care este membru în Consiliul de Administrație și totodată IR Manager la, la companie. Welcome to uh, Poveștile bursei, Peter. Hello, yeah, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm honored to be here at your show today. Let's talk about uh, your company, Dene Agrar. Uh, it's um, how it started. How started the business? Let's make a brief uh, history. Yes, my father uh, founded, which is currently also the CEO of the Dene Agrar Group, uh, founded uh, the Dene Agrar Group in 2008. Uh, he brought with uh, Dutch capital, with uh, Dutch investors. Uh, he, he came to the to the Romanian market, and um, uh, his dream was always to become the largest milk producer in uh, in Europe. There, from all it started. He has much experience uh, in the agriculture sector in the Netherlands and in Germany. Uh, the first foreign investments uh, we did uh, were in Germany, and he saw. Uh, the changes uh, in perception to food production, etc., as well as uh, climate change, uh, that, uh, and, and he saw mainly the, the huge opportunities that Eastern Europe has. So he did the market uh, research, uh, he went to Hungary, uh, Serbia, Ukraine, uh, Romania, and after uh, visiting all those countries, he thought that uh, he saw the, the, the huge potential in Romania, especially that Romania has a huge uh, fragmented uh, agricultural uh, sector. Uh, that uh, Romania is importing, so it's mainly depending on other uh, countries, other markets uh, for its own uh, food supply. An example is uh, Romania imports more than 50% uh, of uh, raw milk and even if we look to f uh, final products it's even higher it's over 60 uh, percent mainly it imports from Hungary and uh, Poland so he saw a huge opportunity to develop uh, uh, and to the and as well as to deliver a contribution uh, to the food supply of uh, Romania so in 2008 he started to purchase uh, a, f uh, the, a dozen of, uh, of hectares uh, in Romania and uh, then he started to to purchase the first farm in uh, that was at that time bought from Alba Lact in Hunedoara County, and since then the the, the company gradually uh, grows. We had uh, different groups of Dutch investors for several companies, and in the end, it ended up uh, with 15 uh, legal uh, entities uh, in Romania, which uh, has uh, milk production. Uh, crop production, uh, logistics, uh, consultancy. So it was. Uh, he created a full integrated uh, uh, business. So if we say what's the model, the business model now, uh, how uh, how appears? Um, as uh, of today, uh, uh, the main business model is of course uh, for producing uh, milk. Uh, at the moment, we are the largest milk producer in uh, Romania. We are the leading uh, milk producer uh, here. Um, uh, since uh, two years ago, uh, two and a half years ago, we became uh, listed uh, on the Bucharest Stock Exchange. And after getting listed, uh, we did two acquisitions. Um, and through those acquisitions, uh, we became the largest milk producer in, uh, in Romania. Um, and that is the main business line. We also start, uh, we will open new business lines. At the moment we have also crop production, but uh, as we are perform circular agriculture, that uh, the majority of the food that we produce, we have seven, we work 7,000 hectares inside the group, plus 3,000 hectares outside of the group. And with that mainly we produce uh, the feedstock for our own, uh, own animals, let's say 90%, but we also sell some crops uh, outside of the group, which are, uh, for example, uh, soybeans, but also sunflowers, flour and some other smaller crops but mainly it is uh, uh, the main production of the food is used for our own animals with the manure those animals produce that are it's organic fertilizer with that we fertilize our soil and of course the milk uh, we sell externally in the group but currently soon in a few weeks we will open a new business line that is our compost uh, compost plant so we can talk about circular agriculture yes 
Yes, we, we perform circular agriculture, although uh, uh, maybe from an outsider perspective, uh, we are a huge, uh, a huge company. We have uh, over 15,000 uh, uh, animals. Uh, in the coming years, we will grow that to over 20,000 uh, uh, animals. Um, by the end of this year, our goal is to produce uh, approximately 200,000 liters uh, per day. And uh, if we look uh, till 2027, uh, by the end of 2027, our goal is to produce 300,000 liters uh, uh, per day. Um, but we are providing our own feedstock, as I said already. Next to that, we use our own fertilizer to, to fertilize our soil. With that, we can heavily reduce uh, the uh, consumption of chemical fertilizer, which of course is way more polluting for the environment. Uh, uh, than our organic fertilizer. So on that part, we are a circular uh, com uh, company, as well as we are currently investing in uh, photovoltaic panels, etc., to even uh, to become more circular. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's uh, talk before you you get listed. What uh, challenges do you encountered this year? Uh, there were uh, the the main challenges. Um, I think the main challenge uh, is in, in investing in, in Romania is uh, the, the, the unpredictability in regards to legislation. Uh, that can, uh, 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 if, if it's sometimes a little bit, if I compare it to the Netherlands with the weather uh, as we have in the Netherlands, we can have uh, four seasons on one day, okay, that you don't have in Romania, but uh, the legislation can really change uh, every several months, or a new legislation can be implemented, uh, then sometimes there comes criticism from the market, and then it is changed uh, uh, again. And of course, uh, investment decision, especially in our skills that we do, we talk about millions of euros. Since we are in Romania, since 2008, we have invested uh, over for 100 million euros uh, into in uh, Romania and that are all long-term uh, investment decisions and for that of course we need certain predictability and that makes it sometimes uh, hard or it can cause a challenge uh, uh, that every investment will be uh, successful uh, so that means that we need, we need uh, to be flexible and always uh, we always think two steps ahead okay this uh, uh, law is implemented, but okay, will this work or not, or, or will they change their mind? Okay, do we have uh, then some alternative routes that we can still make it happen? But you get used to it this yes, year. We are for <laughs> many years here now, uh, now active, uh, and of course as well as uh, 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 although the CEO and myself we are from the Netherlands, our entire team and also our entire management team is uh, Romanian, so we are really we have deep roots here in the into the society and in the countries. So uh, we are got used to it and we worked around it and I think that, that can clearly be seen because uh, 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 from that perspective it's quite an achievement in a bit more than uh, 10 years to become uh, the largest uh, milk producer in Romania and as well we are at the moment as well one of the leaders in, uh, in the EU including the UK as well. Mm -hmm. But about the seasons, okay in your area there you have uh, four seasons let's say Transylvania that uh, count but uh, in south of the country Unfortunately, we have uh, big uh, changes and uh, we have only two seasons, let's say, yeah. maybe three. How you see this? Uh, it's a problem for the uh, Romanian farms and uh, it's uh, how we, uh, this year you see the agriculture in Romania. They started big farms already from the small ones. How, how you see in the future? Yes. It's the right way. No, I think uh, certain segments are really uh, developed in Romania, especially if we look to the poultry uh, sector. I think this is a sector that is heavily industrialized and um, I, I'm really confident to say uh, that that industry can compete uh, with Western European countries. It's probably even uh, in certain stages even more uh, developed, uh, this industry, than in Western European uh, countries with large, really large scale farms. In the dairy sector, of course, it's a little bit uh, different. Uh, I think on average uh, in Romania, uh, a cow uh, gives eight liters uh, 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 of milk, produces eight liters of milk, and that is the lowest in all of the EU. Uh, as well as that, um, uh, the average farms exist of uh, 25 cows, uh, 35 uh, dairy cows. And so it's extremely, uh, it's extremely uh, fragmented. Um, I always use the example um, here in Romania, you have the Napolact, uh, uh, brand. Uh, last year, uh, the Napolox uh, brand, they process per day, it's uh, owned by Frisson Campina, it's, uh, they process per day approximately 296,000 liters uh, per day. In, by the end of 2020, and for that, to, to collect all those 290,000 uh, liters of milk per day, they need to go to approximately 1,100 farmers to collect this amount. Uh, we will produce 
by the end of 2027, 300,000 liters per day with four farms. So there you can, uh, what they, for where they need to go to 1,100 farms, we will produce the same quantity of milk uh, with four farms. So there you see the, the fragmentation. Um, and of course, when you have, when there are so many small farms, it's hard to invest in uh, hygiene, in uh, efficiency, in uh, training for your staff, in uh, animal welfare, etc., because the budgets are small. Uh, I think uh, a big advantage is uh, that we have uh, that we have large farms is that we have a 24/7 monitoring by uh, vets, by veterinary staff, as well as supporting uh, staff. So everything is monitored. We have data analysts. We monitor everything. We invest a lot of animal welfare, where we can leave the animals outside. We have hundreds of uh, uh, pastures. Uh, where we leave the animals outside, especially when they are uh, young stock, but also when they are in their final phase of, uh, of pregnancy. Uh, so we invest heavily in these kinds of uh, things, as well as in technology. We invested now, uh, two years ago, in, uh, at the moment we collect our manure in open lagoons. There you collect also a lot of, uh, of water, which means additional transportation costs, uh, also labor costs, etc., to bring that manure and the water to the fields. Now we invest it in an eight kilometer long pipe, which we can hang into the lagoon. And with that, we can, uh, from up to eight kilometers of the farms, we can directly pump the manure uh, uh, to, the, to the machine on the field. And we're there before we could fertilize 13 hectares per day with one tractor. Now we can fertilize with one tractor 45 hectares per day. So there you can see, see the, 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 the advantages of uh, economic economies of uh, of scale in Transylvania, the main reason uh, my father, when he entered the Romania, he did a, a, a deep research in uh, Romania because uh, Bucharest, the Bucharest area has a lot of advantages. You have a lot of flat land. There's possibility to irrigation to a certain uh, degree. Uh, then you have the Moldovan area where the land is significantly cheaper, as well as labor costs, etc. Uh, than in the Transylvania region than where we are. But at that time when he made the assessment, uh, uh, he, he, mainly, he mainly chose uh, Transylvania uh, because of the rainfall. So throughout the years we see that uh, Transylvania has most stable and sufficient number of uh, rainfall. Last year was a difficult year, but this year, um, uh, at least our agricultural year is uh, uh, if we only look to, to, the, to the tons per hectare, etc., it's, uh, it's really a good year. We have on every crop this year, we have significantly higher number of tons harvested compared to last year. Of course, the market prices are a concern because uh, we have already for several years that we cannot uh, 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 produce, uh, or our production costs are higher than uh, when we would purchase from the market. The market prices are for several years lower. Uh, but in agriculture, that's really difficult. We need to take the decision in the beginning of the year if you will sow uh, or not. Uh, and then, of course, you don't know the market prices that you only know later uh, in the year. And they are extremely volatile. And uh, the last couple of weeks, they are the lowest in, uh, in four years. And uh, even this year, if we look to Europe, to the European market, uh, the, in, in generally speaking, uh, the, the, the harvest is really poor. It's a really hard season for many farmers in, in Europe. But we see records uh, uh, harvested of number of tons in Brazil and uh, other countries in Southern uh, America, as well as we see a, a decrease in requests from China and other Asian countries. So that means that even in such a tough year, where usually we would see an increase in uh, prices uh, on the market, that still the, the prices remain low. And that, of course, is, uh, is of concern. Uh, we are not so much affected by this. As I said, we are an integrated business and we perform circular agriculture that the majority of our feedstock at the moment, because we grow so fast, uh, uh, we need uh, to, to feed our own, uh, own cows. Mm -hmm. uh, you develop and sustain the growth of the business with capital, yes? How you started and uh, after, the, of course, after you get listed, you can uh, attract capital from the investors. But till then, how you, how you started? Uh, so we started uh, to go around uh, to many events in uh, the Netherlands uh, where hosted uh, for investing uh, Romania. We made uh, a clear strategy and uh, kind of a bid book uh, to invest in Romania. And through that, uh, uh, we found approximately 100 investors uh, in the Netherlands uh, to invest in agriculture in Romania. And with those 100 investors, there were done several, uh, were started several businesses, all more or less in the agricultural uh, uh, sector. 
um, as well as in the field service providing as well. We are as an integrated business, as I said already, we also do let's say 80 to 90 percent of our own field services. So harvesting, seeding, uh, no-till uses, uh, all those kind of things. Mainly we do our uh, ourselves into the group. Uh, later on we had also bank uh, financing um, as well. Uh, for a long period, uh, ING is one of our long-term uh, uh, partners uh, here on the Romanian market, as well as uh, Exim uh, Bank. Uh, but first, uh, for the, a lot of couple of years, uh, ING, uh, uh, we had loans, several loans from ING Bank as well, uh, from Raffaisen Bank uh, as well, and uh, we received uh, also one million euro, uh, pro almost one million euros uh, of EU subsidies uh, to construct the Apolt uh, farm. The investment is way uh, larger; uh, such a farm uh, easily is, we talk about an investment of, uh, let's say, approximately ten million euros for such a farm. So uh, the the investment is uh, it was really a small amount. Uh, the the subsidies, um, and then we became uh, we came uh, listed. Uh, why? Why you choose to be a public company? Uh, because we wanted, we had several group of investors in all, in all those uh, companies, and we wanted to integrate and to consolidate the business and to become the first the leader in uh, in Romania in milk production. And the next step was that uh, our goal is to become the largest milk producer in all of the, the EU. So for that, we needed to consolidate. It consolidate uh, our, our business model and to integrate all those businesses and to buy out uh, those Dutch investors. That was also an agreement with the Dutch investors to make uh, an exit after 10 years uh, of their investment. Um, and this was, uh, the we thought, the, the best way uh, to do it. So we, uh, we raised at that time 5 million euros um, by the IPO. And uh, with that, we purchased the Lacto Agar farm. So we bought out uh, the other investors from the Lacto Agar farm. We integrated that in the DNA Agar uh, group. That's our farm located in Hunadwara County. Next to that, we are located in Alba County and uh, Sibiu uh, County for the moment. Um, and then uh, we took a loan, after that we took a loan from ING to purchase the Apolt farm and that we integrated into the group as well. Um, and I think we, so far, it's quite a success story uh, on the stock exchange. Uh, it is not only to, to, to consolidate the business, but it's also a great um, educational experience, I would say, or a learning journey for, all, uh, uh, for the whole organization to further professionalize and to work on a, on a, on a different uh, level uh, and to prepare the company to become really the major player in milk production in all of, uh, of uh, Europe. Because, of course, then you need to step up uh, as an organization uh, as well um, and uh, to give you an example last year we had a share price growth of 74 percent and since listing uh, we have a, a share price growth of over 130 percent and we are only two and a half years uh, uh, listed on uh, on the Romanian stock exchange, and so far, at least, uh, we can compete with uh, IT companies and other companies uh, 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 on the stock market. But uh, tell me, tell me some advantage uh, of being a public company listed on the uh, IRO market. Uh, th let's first uh, uh, share with you the, the internal perspective on that. Um, I think it really helped us to 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 become even more focused on uh, on figures. Because now we need to report every three quarters, uh, or sorry, every quarter, every three months, uh, every quarter we need to publish our financial results. Gives also a lot of pressure on the organization to constantly uh, provide this kind of report, especially with the size of our organization. Um, uh, but I think one of the advantages is that everything becomes really, really focused on figures, uh, on profitability, uh, to, to maintain with your margins. Um, um, as we just published the half year results, uh, we remain steadily with our profit margin of 18% with an EBITDA margin of over 40%. Uh, percent. But um, uh, I think that is a big advantage to have way more visibility um, as well. Um, so we get uh, now almost weekly contacted uh, with offers uh, for M&As or whatsoever because people know us uh, in the market to negotiate better deals. Uh, that's on one hand so, because on the other hand we also need to, we have completely open books and an open strategy, so sometimes also negotiations can become a bit harder when uh, certain suppliers see that uh, you're a profitable company and uh, of course they think, oh, you make enough profit, uh, we should negotiate harder. But mainly I would say feasibility, growth, so we have new financing options, not only uh, bank financing uh, or private equity or whatsoever, but we have a new instrument we added 
uh, a new instrument to our toolbox uh, to further growth and especially that we want to accelerate our growth and that we become now a more mature company uh, that we are now actively looking on the M&A market to further integrate businesses in now to our company. I would say that are the main, uh, the main uh, advantages and as I said the growth of professionalism and uh, standardization processes uh, of our uh, of our uh, company and our yeah. people and to become the largest meal producer in the EU will be a big advantage being uh, listed and yeah. on the main market yes you have in plans to to go one two years on the main yes, market yes i would say two to three years, two to three years. Uh, as an organization we will be ready to to do the upgrade to the main market um, uh, I, think I would say somewhere from next uh, year. Uh, currently, we are implementing IFRS. We implemented uh, SAP, the, uh, the, sub, the, the ERP uh, uh, system for this. Um, um, and I expect to finalize uh, IFRS uh, by the end of this year, beginning of, uh, of next uh, year, this implementation. So then from an organizational point of view, we are ready to the upgrade to the main market. But we would like to, to grow our business um, uh, a bit more in the coming period, especially uh, we obtained at the beginning of this year from Exim Bank. Uh, 9.7 million euros plus uh, uh, own contribution of uh, over 20 percent and with that we will build uh, the Straja project which we started at the beginning of the year that is a new farm with 5,000 animals with two milking rotors where we will milk three times uh, per day and that farm that single farm will produce over 100,000 liters uh, uh, per day and that farm will be fully operational by the end of 2027. This year already, by the end of this year, we will milk there the first 900 dairy cows uh, in, the, in, the, in December. Um, and with that investment, plus the compost plant, because currently uh, uh, we are finalizing our compost plant, which had an investment of approximately 1.8 million uh, euros. And with that, we will produce a fertilizer for our own uh, hectares that are further away uh, from the farm, as well as will be a new business line. So this we will also uh, sell uh, externally. With those two investments, uh, uh, um, we expect to double our business by the end of 2027. Since it's good to mention, I think since we got listed only two and a half years ago, we tripled our business only in two and a half years' time since we got listed. And now we have a clear strategy to, in the coming uh, two to three years, to double our uh, business, and we are on track. Uh, uh, for this, so th that I think, especially for an agricultural uh, a company, we look in this uh, in, a, in a time span of five years uh, uh, to grow your business uh, uh, five times. I think that's quite uh, quite uh, significant. Um, but so the investors like this because uh, you see they they appreciate let's say your business and the growth. We talk about the EBITDA, yeah. the revenues, every profit. Uh, how you will see in the, the end of this uh, uh, five years, let's say? Yeah, our goal is, as I said, we have uh, it varies a little bit, but uh, okay, the markets are quite uh, relatively quiet, etc., and everyone is, is waiting a bit. Although, um, if you look to our uh, traded volumes uh, and the transactions, etc., at the moment we can compete already with. Uh, many companies on the main market uh, who are in the index. Uh, if we look just to traded, uh, traded volumes, like last year, we had the second highest traded volume uh, on the, on the, uh, on the Aero uh, uh, market. So on that part, we do quite successful. Also, we contracted the market making service to increase uh, liquidity. Uh, so on that part, we are quite, uh, quite satisfied. But we think uh, that we need to come closer to a market valuation uh, or market cap, uh, let's say, of approximately 100 million euros. At the moment, but it varies a bit between 50 to 60 million euros. With that investment in the compost plant and uh, in the Stryker project, we expect, although the market cap varies on many things, also on emotional matters, uh, sentiment, all these kind of things. Yeah, you cannot. <laughs> Not only here, everywhere. No, everywhere. I mean, uh, no, that is a worldwide. Uh, we saw a correction uh, exactly. a few weeks ago, or I think one and a half month ago. Uh, and after uh, for one days. day, the next day, <laughs> yes. it was uh, back on track. So it's really hard to predict uh, the market. But from our experience for those two and a half years, uh, we expect uh, that we should be able more or less to come close to that. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, when we come more close to that valuation, we will do the upgrade to the main market. And of course, it depends on the market uh, conditions as well, because of course, we would like to do a capital increase at that time as well. Um, but we have already uh, many, I had many meetings so far with institutional investors, with pension funds. They show great interest to, to invest 
uh, and else, of course, we need to do uh, two things. To maintain this uh, growth. Yes, we need, of course, to maintain and uh, to implement IFRS and to do the upgrade to the main market as they are not allowed to, 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 to invest in us. But I think the, the, at the moment, uh, the, the, the strategy and also that the outcomes, uh, we are quite certain that we will reach all our goals. We can explain you why. That is, we have all the financing for those projects. For the Stratia project, the financing is approved. For the, the compost factory, it's already uh, uh, financed. So now we need to do the operational part to construct. We have our own construction team, so a big part of construction we do uh, in-house. And um, um, uh, so that the, now it's yeah, it's more or less do only to get the job done, start to work, <laughs> make our hands dirty, and uh, and get ready. But this I want to ask you at the end of our discussion: a message to our to your investors. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I think we have some, 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 soon we will also announce some, some extra uh, news. I think uh, one big thing is that we would like to invest in a, in a, in a biogas project. With this biogas station, it will be uh, probably a station of approximately uh, 15 megawatts. It's, it will be uh, one of the largest industrial biogas stations in all of uh, the EU. Uh, and with that, we can reduce our emission by 90%. Currently, we are in final negotiation to select the final partner. Uh, to, to, to do this investment and to start this cooperation. Of course, we need further lobby uh, on the Romanian government that uh, injection into the grid becomes possible in Romania. This is already possible in all of Europe, and we really hope and we are confident uh, that this also uh, will be happen, that, uh, that it will happen, that, uh, we, uh, that you can inject biogas into the grid, and it will give uh, also Romanian consumers access to a green, uh, to green uh, gas and to, to, uh, to, to get their house heated in a sustainable uh, uh, way. So that we hope to announce in the coming period. But I think the clear message is that uh, we tripled our, Dienegar tripled its company in the last two and a half years and that we want to double it uh, by the end of 2027 um, and that we are clear on track of that. And by the end of 2027, uh, we will produce over 300,000 liters per day, which means by the end of 2028, we will produce over 100 million of liters on an annual basis, which will put, put us in the leading position in, uh, in the EU, including the UK, uh, in milk production. So our, our clear strategy is not to be the, the, the Romanian leader and to sustain that, but also to become the European leader. Good luck in, in achieving your goals, uh, Peter. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and I'm glad to be here. Încheiem aici ediția de astăzi a poveștilor bursei. Una interesantă am discutat cu Peter de Boer de, spre DNA Agrar, cel mai mare producător de, de lapte din România, care își propune, iată, să devină cel mai mare producător din Uniunea Europeană. Până data viitoare, rămâneți alături de programele noastre. La revedere! Descoperă viziunile viitorului. Poveștile bursei. Un proiect susținut de PricewaterhouseCoopers, Banca Comercială Română și Bursa de Valori București.